Today we'll be delving into electrofusion, which is a process used to join plastic pipes together by welding their plastic with heat generated by an electric current. Let's go through the various tools you'll need. First off, the electrofusion controller itself. These come in different shapes and sizes, so don't worry if yours doesn't look exactly like this one. Some pipe clamps. These are essential for keeping the joints still and secure during the welding process. A pipe scraper. You can get loads of different types of these, but today we're using a rotary scraper. Some re-rounding tools. Some degreasing wipes, a tape measure and a marker pen. A pipe cutter to give the pipe a clean square cut end. And finally, an electrofusion fitting. There's a wide range of these for all situations, but we'll be using a straight coupler. Let's get to it. Performing the demonstration today, we have Duncan from Plasson. So, taking your square cut pipe, and it needs to be square cut, so use those pipe cutters. Give it a clean to remove any debris or dirt. Throughout the entire process, you should be doing this with the degreasing wipes with both the fitting and pipe, as any grease from your fingers can prevent the fitting from welding properly. Next up, you need to first measure the fitting, which in our case is 120 millimeters. Then mark half of this onto the pipe, so 60 millimeters, to indicate how much of the pipe needs to be inserted into the fitting. We're then going to make another mark 20 millimeters from this to indicate how much of the pipe's surface we need to scrape off for safety, to ensure the entirety of the inserted surface gets welded properly. Next up, you guessed it, we're going to scrape the pipe. This is to remove the oxidized layer of plastic on the surface that would actually prevent the welding process. So you need to absolutely make sure that there are no unscraped parts left. To ensure this, draw scribbles over the entire surface area that needs scraping. Skipping ahead, we're now going to secure the pipe in the clamps. These will remain like this for the rest of the welding process until the pipe has fused and cooled entirely to ensure the strongest and straightest joint. Now that the pipe is secured in clamps, it's going to make the actual scraping process a lot easier and quicker. Once finished, if no scribbles are showing after you've scraped, then you've taken enough of the surface off. This is where that second line we drew on the pipe comes in handy, as you'll have removed the initial line through scraping, but can measure 20 millimeters away from the second line to redraw it in the same place. This is also a good time to attach the re-rounding tools, which we recommend in all cases, despite how circular your pipe may seem. There is almost always slight overling, especially when they've been in a coil. Now we've got the fitting slotted in, it's time to check how long we need to weld it and cool for. This info can be found on the barcode label on the fitting. Some EF controllers will require you to input the weld time manually. Some will have a scanner that reads the barcode and inputs the time for you. But the one we're using actually has special wires that read the welding data from the pins on the fitting. Whatever the case, just follow the manufacturer's instructions that will have come with the EF controller. Now this is all set up, it's time to initiate the welding process. Cutting forward, in our case the welding time is 60 seconds, and now that that time's up our machine gives us a date and finish time. It's now good practice to sign and date the fitting to indicate it's been completed, as well as for the benefit of any future inspections or maintenance. Even though the welding process is finished, you still need to leave the clamps and re-rounding devices attached for the entirety of the cooling time, which will also be specified on the barcode. Now that the joint is fully cooled, it's fine to remove the re-rounding tools as well as the clamps. Further evidence of a weld having been done can be seen in the weld indicators shown here that have now risen, in comparison to a fitting that hasn't been welded where they're still retracted. Well that's about it, you now have a completed electrofusion joint. For further information, and should you need any electrofusion fittings or controllers, please head to our website or give us a call on this number.